flicker back into existence, right. standing outside the entrance to the tomb. The front door of the tomb looks exactly as it did before. Okay. Sir Bertrand. Tiava. I, I don't. I don't know what happened. Both now. of you give me perception checks. Seven minus one is six, and for me, twenty. You can hear a muffled voice from the other side Jovo. of the door. It's very difficult Oof. to make out the words. Jovo. Well, at least he's not stuck in whatever vision it was. What? Jovo, do you know As... what France is? If, oh. if you do, I'm in the right place. Oh. Well, he's not dead. Um... Is this France? <sighs> it feels is there, like France. Is there, on this side, is there a way to open it at all? Nope. No, okay. Uh, I'll hammer on the wall. Go, Eddie! Do I hear? Roll. 18 on the roll. You do. Oh, Chilva! Chilva! It's a... You've, you've got to do the trial! No, 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 it wasn't a trial. It was like a queen. There was no court or nothing. Where were you? Not France. Right. It, uh, was, it was hot, really hot. Okay, and... What what was what could you see? You mentioned a queen. There was a lady. She had she was wearing like posh stuff, like a belt, and and there was and there was lots of other people. There were no statues, Chelva. Test of knowledge, history. Yeah, I've got thirteen, and I have uh, uh, max a fifteen. <laughs> yeah, with a fifteen, you can remember at least belt the bare bones queen. of each of the twelve labors at this point. Steal the belt. No, I can't do that. I'm a paladin. No, that's the point. That's what Heracles... It's a trial of Heracles. Who's he? Greek hero is... He's... The the, the freeze the, on the door. The, yeah, it's dead cold. The greatest hero. <laughs> <laughs> what? I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest hero in history. Heracles himself. Right. Let's say he didn't steal the belt of uh, the Queen of the Amazons so much as borrow it. Hmm? Oh, Indefinitely. Right. Indefinitely, but with the full intention of eventually giving it back. All right, right. Give so me that's, a... that's precisely what you need to do, Edward, in order to join us here on the other side. All right, I've got a plan. All right? So, one sec. I reach out and take wait, the wait, hand wait, again. Wait, 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 wait. Eddie? Oh, Nothing no. happens. You are holding a cold stone hand. Plan didn't work. What happened? Nothing. Right, you, did, did you touch the hand? Yeah. Right, well... Has anyone ever told you you're extremely disappointing? Has anyone ever told you that you're underground? Yep. Me, right now, quite successfully, having completed part of a heroic quest right. adequately. Mm. Stay there. And don't do anything stupid. If a stranger offers you help. if a stranger offers you sweets, don't take them. Don't go find help, you will die. It's so, alright, I've got a plan. Nope. Right. Well, fine. Does the plan involve sitting down and being quiet until a responsible grown-up turns up? There is no response. Well he's <laughs> He's an adult. If he wants to go and get himself killed, he's welcome to. Mm. Well, that's a big no. Ah, uh, well well we need to get out of here. We need we, we're inside the tomb of hell, yeah. Mr. Storces. What a way to... Ruining my mood. <laughs> ah. Look at it. Mm. Look at it. Such beauty. Mm. Such magnificence. And Bertie just kind of, you know, raises the gauntlet, gesturing at the rest of the room. What, what, what can we see? A relatively bare stone hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. Such simplicity. Mm. Such simplicity of form. The Carthaginians had a real eye for this sort there's, of thing. As I said, there's a set of steps down and then the hallway continues and a, but because of the angle and your height, you can't see much further down. When you reach the bottom of the hallway, the yep. hallway is quite long. There is clearly a room at the end of it. The room has what looks like an altar of some kind, mm -hmm. but likely to be a sarcophagus from the way it's laid out at the very end. There's a patch just at the beginning of the long hallway where it is not made of the same stone as everything else. It's quite a wide patch, 15 foot, and it is made out of some sort of glowing silver material. It is quite obviously magical. Does it look obviously threatening, or is it um, just sort of just clearly magical? 
Okay, so what else is in the room? How is it decorated? The room at the end is much more ornate. But there's stone carvings and various things down at that end, and there's some finery, you know, some gold that has perhaps burnished a little in the two millennia. The lighting in here, is it just off of um, Bertie's... Uh, no, so well, there's the go glowing golden patch of the floor. There's also gemstones set into cool. the upper parts of various bits of the hallway, and it's, so it's all it's quite low level lighting, but it's there's it's, it's lit. lit. Yeah, cool. And and the the, the plate is uh, wall to wall. Yep. Okay. That's what's what's your view as an archaeological expert, Mister Storseson? <laughs> I shall search my memory banks. <laughs> Have I heard of anything like this? What would you like me to do? Engineering, dungeoneering, history. Dungeoneering. Six. Yep, it's a thing you find in dungeons sometimes. Oh, Magical yeah. stuff. <laughs> no, nothing like this. I mean, I'm <clears throat> very trappy. I'm getting real trap vibes off of this. Um, Bet you wish you had a paladin now. Well, that's the paladin's Bertie, fault. Bertie thinks to himself, then we could just push him into it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Best foot forward, it always wants us to be heroic. Um, I think. Uh, takes out the symbols of Artemis and Apollo that he still has, holds one in each hand, and Tanit and Baal gods of Carthage, protector of the tomb of Hannibal. I, who seek to be his heir of the champion of Carthage, protector of civilization, heir to the greatest hero of bygone age, I, who seek to be his heir, have proven myself worthy of his lineage, and I, I seek your aid. Mm, most uncharacteristically humbly. Do you see how I'm trying to meet you halfway here? And with the symbols in both hands, take one step forward just into their big shimmery magic, obviously trap. Both of you give me a fortitude save. Oh. Uh, 16. Come on, lightning. It's eight. There is an ear-piercing scream, and you both take 13 points of sonic damage. <laughs> Ooh, grim. Do I hear it if I'm outside? Yes. Okay. You both speak Latin, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Can you give me will saves, please? Oh, goody. Oh, dear. Oh, gosh. Uh, three. Nine. You both hear whispers in Latin. Oh, God, just pick a normal volume. Either too loud or too quiet. Something in the middle <laughs> is fine, you know? <laughs> he says all of that in Latin, because he's hearing the whispers in Latin. Both of you are on me a d4. One. Four. You feel compelled to attack Chelva. You are free to act normally. Okay. Uh, when I'm compelled, am I aware that I'm being compelled, or is it? Uh... The whispers yeah. are speaking to you of his imminent desire to attack and kill you, and you know the only way to stop him is to attack him first. Well, uh... you are certain they're telling the truth. Yes. You have no fear under false pretenses, sir. Now you will steal my destiny from underneath me. How dare you, sir? I will split you in twain before I allow you to part me from history. I will part you from this mortal coil. As this is all being said, the sword is being drawn. I, and and uh, am I aware that an effect like the whispers were? You can hear the whispers, but they, they were they were magically kind of powered. Cool. Oh damn. Uh, I will leap as far forward across the plate as I'm able to uh, and try and roll off it away from him. Okay, so you roll away yeah. and you well, jump away Take and, a leap and leap. Roll. And your movement speed is 30. And yours is uh, 20. So you can stay far enough away from him that he Brilliant. can't immediately attack you. Uh, both you rolled me a d4 again. Two, four. Go you away. are still Stop compelled. Go! For at least three combat rounds. <laughs> you yep. can do nothing but babble incoherently. Uh, so I can't move. You can move at your normal speed. You can't take anything that's a non-free action, essentially. <laughs> Make an attack. <laughs> well, I'm, moving, but I'm still moving away. Yeah, but he can now charge. Oh, fair enough. 23. Uh, yeah, that, that beats my AC. Roll uh, the damage. The D10 plus 4. Oh, lucky you. Uh, that is 5 damage. Okay. As you're backing off, a section of the floor falls away. Can you both give me reflex saves? I have 20. And not, not natural. 10. As the floor falls away, you manage to just about throw yourself backwards and you land on your back and there is now just a pit across the corridor in front of you. Chelvar, you tumble in. You take six damage. 
From just the full. Yeah. Both you roll me 1d4. I have two. Three. You are now compelled to do nothing but babble incoherently. You want to hurt yourself. Roll a d6. You do yourself four points of damage. And I fall over. Am I able to like think coherently apart from the babbling? I'm, uh, I'm no, like... but the, the babbling only lasts six seconds. Okay. Uh, and once that is over, you are now able to act freely as you choose. Cool. How far away am I from the altar at the far end of the room? Uh, you are on the wrong side of a pit, and you are about two-thirds of the way down the hallway. How uh, wide is the pit? It is five foot wide. That's... Pretty jumpable, yes. even for someone like me. If only you had yes. a small dog you could throw yeah, over throw it. Yeah, throw over it. I'm sure that would be manageable. <laughs> Mr. Storsison! Mr. Storsison! Wake up, Mr. Storsison! I'll make my... Uh, what is it? Because that was terrible. It's DC 10. Nope. So I go... You take one yeah. extra point. You can be completely aware that the fact you attacked it was clearly the effect of a spell. It's not hard to work that out. Terribly sorry about that. Definitely a spell. No hard feelings. Uh, I wouldn't mind waking up so I can apologise to you properly, if briefly. No? Oh, well, well, I'll just, I just suppose I'll never have to apologise to sincerely ever, because I've now done that, and that is all my obligations fulfilled. Excellent. Lovely. Is there anything in my adventurous kit that would help me cross this rope? Level? You've got climbing gear. Cool. Like, you could climb along a wall... In that case, I will remove my armour and attempt to climb across it. Okay. Give me a climb check. Yeah. I stabilise. 16 plus 3 is 19 plus whatever bonus I get from climbing gear. You're fine. Yeah, cool. you get across the pit. Love it. Put my armour back on. I mean, there it is. It's, uh... Yeah, you, you'll have to toss it across the pit yeah. first. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, the whole process takes forever. It's... <laughs> yes, it's slow. As long as you just don't drop it on Shelvar's unconscious yep. form yep. and get Why a twofer. Not? Yep. Fine by me. Uh, it's not struggling against him, so it's relatively easy to throw <laughs> it five foot. <laughs> Even Bertie has worked out at this point that there are traps and they are probably triggered by things on the floor if the first one is anything to go by. Yep. I'm going across that in a small five foot element of wall just climbing along the wall. I could continue to climb along the rest of it, uh, but I'm not sure that would necessarily be the first thought that would enter his mind. So I think he's just going to go for attempting to sort of like throw them across because he doesn't want to he's not that comfortable out of armour where there's lots of dangerous things around because that's a little bit foolish so once he's on the other side of the pit he's going to take the uh, he's still got these uh, symbols of Artemis and Apollo mm -hmm. and I think he's going to just toss one of them just onto the floor a little bit in front of him I mean reverentially uh, just to see if anything triggers so he's just going to toss the let's say the symbol of Apollo something like that. you toss it on the floor ahead of you and a little hole opens up in the wall and there's a twang right, there is the symbol of Artemis to a place just very slightly to the left of uh, where the previous symbol was the same thing happens a different spot on the wall there's, there's clearly a little sliding sound of something and then yeah. there's another twang and nothing happens give me a perception check uh, 18 minus 1 is 17. Now that you look more closely, there are old, rotted, rusted arrows, two or three of them, just sort of brushed into a tiny pile in a corner, quite near this section of the corridor. Bertie kind of like leans in underneath like where the arrows have clearly come from and just kind of like pats his foot on the, uh, on the flagstone underneath it to try and like trigger as many of these as possible. Okay, yeah, you walk along doing this. It happens a couple of times. There is one that shoots an actual arrow, yeah. but you're being very careful, uh, and so it <laughs> misses you. Um, I was going to give you a bonus to your AC, but since I rolled a one, it was irrelevant. <laughs> okay, so yeah, most of these arrow traps seem to have been emptied already. There was yeah. only an arrow left in one of them, and it missed you. You have now entered the room. There is a sarcophagus on a little raised platform in front of you, and there's a lot of finery around this wall. This is this is the bit of the tomb they've clearly put a lot more effort sure. into. Um, I picked up the symbols of Artemis and Apollo, so I have those back yeah. now. What around me looks valuable? There is golden gems. Mm -hmm. There is no weaponry, mm -hmm. but there, yeah, just pieces of finery scattered around the edges of this room. That yeah. seems like it's probably worth money. So there is a sarcophagus. There's a sarcophagus looking reasonably grand and fancy. Yes. Cool. Bertie kneels down in front of the sarcophagus and presents his sword in both hands and announces to the sarcophagus, there you are, Hannibal. 
champion of Carthage, protector of civilization, heir to the greatest heroes of the bygone age. And Bertie kind of, you know, he's holding his sword in one hand, but he's also kind of like rolling his finger around, like, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> I, who seek to be your heir, have proven myself worthy of your lineage. I mean, look at that blooming mess behind me. That's feeble, that was. Mm. Look how well I've done. Come on! Come on! Open up, eh? Destiny! Mm. Destiny! And Bertie starts, like, hammering on the top of the sarcophagus, like a toddler throwing a fit. Come on! Let's have you! Mm. The sarcophagus opens. Good! Excellent! It's empty. What? 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 Or maybe it's not. The small glow has started in the very centre of the tomb. And as you peer closely, you can see there's a small piece of paper which is now glowing and lifts slowly into the air. And you hear in your head a voice speaking English. Mm -hmm. Dearest Gottfried, I am afraid that once again you have failed to best me. I have reached this tomb first as I have preceded you to so many other discoveries. If only you could finally admit that your quest to best me will never be fulfilled and retire from your foolish endeavours, I'm sure you would be a great deal happier. I'm sure that your university would love to have you occupy a teaching position. But since you insist on continuing, I would like to continue demonstrating my superiority. The artefacts that I have discovered in this sarcophagus are intriguing. The enchantments laced into them certainly indicate that the ancients had knowledge ahead of us in some areas, though we, by which I mean I, have certainly advanced past them in others, thanks in large part to uh, the efforts of myself. My findings shall be accompanying me back to Prague, where I shall derive great enjoyment from unlocking their secrets, secrets that I am afraid, once again, you shall never learn. For if I am to see further than other men, it shall be by standing on the shoulders of the giants from the Age of Heroes, not by collaborating and consorting with the pipsqueaks you seem so eager to spend time with. <laughs> Which brings me on to my gift to you. I have left behind in this tomb a trinket that I am sure you will appreciate. I believe it can only enhance the level of conversation available to you, given the uh, intellectual abilities of your associates. Uh, perhaps it can assist you with the charms you seem so fond of churning out. My researches on Homer's tomb continue apace, and I have reason to suspect that the treasure contained within will eclipse even this discovery I've made here today. If you hope to beat me there, you really must work harder and faster. It would be wonderful to finally have a challenge, but I fear that even you, despite your potential, will be unable to keep up with me. Your colleague, Isaac. And the piece of paper gently wafts back into the tomb. <laughs> Bertie is quiet and is going slowly purple. Okay, and there's nothing else in the sarcophagus at all. With an exhaustive search, yeah. you do find something. You pick up a headband, a circlet. It's made of gold and it's very fine and you can feel that it is heavier than it looks and there is a large lion in the centre which would sit on the forehead of the mm -hmm. wearer and you recognise this. This is one of Hannibal's magical items that is often depicted on him when he's in one of his battle poses and it's known as the Circlet of Command. Do I know anything about the Circlet of Command other than its name? Nope. It's okay. quite commanding. Yep. Bertie takes the circlet. He's not going to try it on because the tone seems too mocking and that, to me, implies that it's going to be cursed in some way. So he's just going to put it into his backpack and gather up a few handfuls of jewels, I think, sure. whatever is available. He's mostly going to take things that look like non-Carthaginian specific, so sure. just non-specific booty. So it's the equivalent of taking like the dungeon equivalent of unmarked non-sequential bills. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. So that's what he's going to take. Sure, out. OK. Join us next week when Bertie looks for a fence. <laughs> At this point, Bertie, he's, he's calmed down now. He's got some booty, some glory that he might enhance later. And he walks back over to the pit. And uh, you can see that the floor of the pit is gradually coming up to floor level. Is Edward still outside the tomb? I don't know. I don't know where Edward is. Edward is outside of the tomb and has been spending the time smashing the frieze into little bits in a vain attempt using his magical weapon to dig his way through to them. 
He's found a middle bit, which is the place that's most likely to be a door, and he's just wailing and on it making one. with his magical the, mace that doesn't take damage. You've, taken, you've just taken a, a, a brief breather, because you've been at this a little while, uh, and now a line has appeared down the exact middle of the doorway in front of is you. Is it in line with where I've been wha- smacking the door? Not exactly, but maybe close. Oh, wicked! Push my hands in and just try and pull it apart. The door opens. Oh! It's all right. It worked. My plan worked. You're now standing at opposite ends of the corridor. You can probably hear him a bit because of the little steps. Yeah. But the entrance, you probably can't see him. Oh, wow. Ah, Edward, Edward, what a pleasure and delight to see you once again. Now, Obviously. You, you must assist me uh, with Mr. Stolzes and me. Oh, give me a second. Fell into a pit. Mm. Stomp over. Horribly injured. <laughs> I'm not under my breath. Oh, Paulos. I lay on hands. Chilva. Healing for... 13 damage. Cool. I do, in fact, wake up. And as a fun, hilarious side effect, it technically heals me for more. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I feel great. Chilva. What? Hello? Ow. Ah. Knock, knock. Oh. Ow. You all right? Yeah, well, not dead, so that's good. Excellent. Bertie, are you all right? Yeah, Sir Bertrand is absolutely fine. He has fulfilled his mythic destiny. We have found the tomb of Hannibal, and it is empty. Look at it. Look. Bertie oh. comes over to the empty sarcophagus, opens up the sarcophagus. Look. Where's the body? Well, quite. Did you leave the piece of paper in the tomb? Uh, yeah, I haven't picked it up. Yeah, it's, so you can pick that piece uh, of paper. I, I would suggest it might be here. All of you, give me a perception check. Four minus one is three. That's 25. And... Ten. Chelva notices that the floor around the tomb bears some scorch marks. You you will also have noticed the broken arrows sort of tied into a corner as you as you came down the last bit of the corridor. Gottfried, known in the archaeology community? Or Isaac, even. Or Gottfried and Isaac. Are they figures in there? There was a very famous Isaac who worked for a long time at the University of Prague... How long ago? About a hundred and something years. Isaac Newton. Oh. Who was the most powerful mage of his day. Ah. So, Isaac found it and didn't tell anyone. No. And kept all the... Yep. All's well that ends well. Classic Newton. (laughs) He was always discovering stuff and not telling people. The Gottfried that he refers to is likely to be Gottfried Leibniz. His longtime rival. Right. Well, congratulations. Well done. We found it. Didn't think we would, if I'm honest, but we did. They tried to throw us with that bit about the whole road thing, but we we <laughs> saw through that. Uh, Edward, um, now I, I, I'm going to teach you a, li- a little song, and I'd like you to just practice it briefly in the corner. Uh, now, it's called La uh, La 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 La. I'm not listening. I can't hear what the grown-ups are saying. Can you repeat after me? Oh, it's all right. Friedrich told me that one. Good, lovely, excellent. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just pottering into the corner there. And I just stand and then go. in the corner facing and watching you. La la. <laughs> la la la. He has a beautiful singing voice. Of course he does. <laughs> Bert, Bertie, Bertie comes over to him and just turns him around so he's facing the wall. Uh, and then goes off into the other corner uh, with uh, Chelva. Oh, I'm chugging a health potion at this point. Now, uh, Mr. Storzerson, I might suggest... Now, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be um, too much of an exaggeration of the truth that we went through significant hardships to discover... Well, I almost died. Exactly, and so did I. Look, I'm um, tired in some way. Now, Mr. Storzen, um, might I suggest that it would be perhaps not too much of a revisionist approach to the current historical situation to suggest that uh, the, the, two, the, the three of us um, had discovered the tomb of Hannibal after much questing and great hardship, and that perhaps... 
any suggestion that there was a note here that might indicate that the tomb had been discovered uh, previously by someone else might perhaps be the sort of secret that should be kept secret and away from the eyes and ears of the tiny minds of the public. Might it perhaps be best for both of us, for your academic reputation and for my, uh, shall we say, public esteem, uh, but he looks around uh, if he could do a perception check for gnomes. <laughs> uh, six minus one, there may or may not be gnomes. Um, <laughs> That's basically the title for season one. Well, may, 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 <laughs> may, may not be <laughs> um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Might be best to perhaps kept this element of proceedings to ourselves. Well, yes. It's a shame that we couldn't find this, uh, you said empty. There's supposed to be a gift. A gift? Oh, uh, this old thing. And Bertie uh, takes out the uh, circlet of command. You also recognise it. The circlet of command! Yes, yeah, fancy thing, isn't it? Uh, that belongs in a museum. Museum? Yes. Well, what? You know, They I... won't pay you for it. Pay? Yes. Oh, well, tell me, tell me, Mr. Saucerson. I'm, uh, I'm obviously, I'm familiar with the Circuit of Command. I recognise it from uh, my own studies. But I cannot remember its precise function. Perhaps you could enlighten me. Nothing, nothing pertaining to the Circuit, unfortunately. Now, I have often thought that museums' collections are, uh, they're, they're not of their greatest benefit to the public when they're held behind closed doors. I think in many ways it is uh, better from a public education perspective to take them around on tour, perhaps, you know, let them see the world, hmm? let, let people view them themselves. And how better than on the head of one of history's greatest heroes? Hmm? Sir Bertrand, I imagine a university or museum will pay you quite highly for that. This is one of the only remaining artefacts well, that we know of, thanks Newton, that actually exists and can be studied. This is an incredibly important artefact and it needs to be studied. The sum of knowledge will be greatly enriched. And, remember, they do remember who discovered them. Hmm? Put their names in plaques and newspapers. When you say plaques, do you mean perhaps honorary chairs? There may or may not be some sort of seating receptacle involved. For the man who finds one of Hannibal's artefacts. And, and banqueting rites. Um, the Oxbridge institutions are known to pay very well and, uh, well... Of course, this would do very well at Trinity, would it not? Some sort of statue, maybe? You know, one of the... the uh, statue of its mighty discoverer hmm? yes. could be erected in the Great Hall. Hmm? And then this could be placed upon it. Hmm? Well... I mean, that would be between you and whoever is in charge of college. Now getting wrapped up in my song, I'm going to come over and continue singing and try to put my arms around everyone's shoulders. Apollo! Eddie! Oh, what a guy! Eddie. Hello, yes. Shut up. All right. Sorry about that. So. Very well, it is decided. This will be a bequest for money to Trinity College. Cambridge, and I'm sure that you will be uh, able to uh, settle the arrangements here. Uh, perhaps you might be the new MacGuffingham scholar hmm? with the seat in, uh, let's say, very wise studies. Hmm? That sounds good to me. Wise and handsome studies. Not, well, thank you, first of all. Very appreciated. You oh. are welcome. This is not an honour that is bestowed lightly. Hmm? The, 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 the chair of wise and handsome oh, studies has a long and noble history since I thought of it merely 30 seconds ago. It has only been occupied by, may I say that you are both the wisest and the most handsome occupant of the seat of wise and handsome the, studies. Eddie, for Sorry. goodness sake, as flattering as your offer is, I'm much more of an outdoorsy kind of person. So I'll have to turn down your generous offer, but a small amount of money to help me continue my studies and I can sort the arrangements for you. Get it sold? Sold is such an ugly word, sir. I prefer to think of it as a bequest with certain fringe benefits. Donated for money. 
egg yet. It seems to me that what everyone needs right now is someone of unpeachable honour and otherwise complete honesty. It's impeachable. Yep. I'm Grab impeachable. I'm, I'm going re- to reach Thank out and go, I presume that I am a, I'm a, what's the word? Middle man. I could do this. That is true. He's too thick to lie. Depends if you can count to 30. Uh, he is also a paladin and will lo- literally lose oh. all his magical powers if he does Oh yeah, I, I become man wrong. in street like that if yeah. I do anything that's even slightly not amazing. Okay. That's it. We have a paladin. That's, that's basically like sending it recorded post. Well, if you're happy to do that, we will just have to give you some very specific Big instructions. I hold... <laughs> I hold my hand out for it. Bertie. Yeah. You hear a voice in your head. Uh, Sir, Sir Bertrand. Yes, yes, I do believe I finally made the connection. Love, lovely to uh, speak to you again. You recognise it as Wilde's voice. Mm. Um, I, I just wanted to inform you that uh, your previous companions, li- Little Hamid is, especially, is uh, in rather a spot of bother and they could they could use your immediate assistance back in Paris if you were able to uh, perhaps get there uh, with some haste some haste uh well I'm in the Alps at the moment Ooh, maybe how... you should come out and you could guide me there personally Mr. Wilde how troubling what a tempting offer mm? it's all lovely skiing mm. I do think they would benefit from your uh, swift arrival Sir Bertrand so lovely to talk to you as always pleasure where are they, Wild? Ta-ta for now. Where are they, Wild? Wild! Um, who are you talking to? None of your business. I've got Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde's inside my head and telling me my friends are in trouble. Well, friend is in trouble. Right. Well, um... In trouble? Oh. Uh, uh, trouble? No, right. We will take ten. Um... No, the, write instructions. Write instructions. Take ten to write very specific instructions that we will give in a sealed envelope to Edward... And they will be to take the uh, circuit of command to Trinity College, Cambridge, where Sir Bertrand will bequeath it to the college in exchange for a uh, modest emolument and the establishment of a uh, MacGuffingham chair. I wouldn't worry about sealing the envelope if you've got words like emolument in there. (laughs) (laughs) Chair of uh, wise and handsome studies. If you wouldn't mind mentioning that I was involved uh, with... The research. Yes, of course. And it would help my career a lot. Am I able to see what you're writing before you put it in the envelope? Yeah, I mean, if you can read the words. <laughs> I, I reach out before you put it in the envelope, take the pen and put, and Edward, after all of it. Cool. Uh, that's what I do. And then we add to it. my inventory yeah. one circlet, which I immediately put on. Don't put it on, Edward. He's just put it on. Something about the circlet has complimented him beautifully. The gold has picked out... The, the colour in his face. He is now literally the most beautiful person you have ever seen. All right, well, this is fun, but uh, no evil. So I don't know about you, but I think we ought to go back and uh, help your friends. Evil! Uh, Ed- Edward, He Ed- finds his words quite persuasive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you've got a, got a point there, haven't you? Mm. I turn around and immediately start walking out. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Apollo. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll shove some of the gold and the jewels in my bag. Bertie does the same with like basically everything remaining now. We can't fit all of it, yeah, but you can get a fair old whack. Whatever looks the most valuable. Follow Eddie. Yes, follow Eddie uh, back down to. Well, yeah, we're all going the same direction. Well, if you follow Eddie, you follow him for about thirty feet and then realise he's going in the wrong direction. Eddie, Eddie, this way. Eddie turns him around. (laughs) Eddie, Eddie, two things. Don't sing because you'll cause an avalanche. And don't sing because that horrible roar. We're gonna have to go back through there. You don't necessarily have to go back. Oh, that's way. just the you've, um, you've, instructions. You've got a map. You know point, roughly actually. where you are. You can take a slightly more direct route back. Oh, do that then. We, we must to Paris with haste, or rather, I must to Paris with haste. Hmm? Okay, well. Eddie, shut up. <laughs> your your journey back to Alberville is relatively uneventful. And evening is beginning to fall. Chill is returned to the air. The, uh, the sun has gone behind the mountains. You are approaching the inn where you were staying. And as you're approaching from this angle, uh, on horseback from up, up in the hills... Am I, wearing Mons- uh, am I riding Monsieur Horse? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Monsieur Horse. Very tall, very tall. Yes, yes. C'était un cheveu. Monsieur Horse. You, you notice, you probably don't notice, probably one of the others notices and points it out to you, but there is a, in fact a gyrocopter on the roof of the tavern. Right, well, 
Eddie, you've got your task. Remember what you need to do? Yep. Italy. No. Visit the destruction. No. See all of that. No, 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 no. You must take this. It is an important, a vitally important All oh, right, quest. yep, yep, yep. Hmm? Holding up the uh, envelope. Yep, okay. yep. Trinity Deliver College, this. Cambridge, and take the circlet there. And yep. Give that to them. Also, yep. please take the circlet off. Take it off. If you see a hat in a museum or, or a helmet, would you put it off? Yes. If you saw a There's tea a... cosy on a table, would you put it on? Not a mo... Right, you, stop it. I'm not an idiot. Yes, I would put the hat on. You're not supposed to. That's why they keep them behind glass, right? You're you learn s- something every day. Yes, so don't. All right. It's incredibly important that you do not. All you right. need to keep it as pristine as possible, put it in a bag, and leave it there All right. until you deliver it to people who have been trained to handle this Open stuff. backpack, just ram it no. in there, close the backpack. I'm so, Sorted. so glad that's magical. Onwards. Oh. Also, uh, I'm somewhat wounded, if you wouldn't mind healing me, and uh, let's just uh, hold his arms <laughs> up in the air. Go on, heal me! Oh, all right. Mm, do you actually need healing, or is it just for oh, the I do need healing. <laughs> I, I love that I have to ask with you. Okay. Yeah. You heal for 14, I heal for 18. So I'm <laughs> back up to my regular number of hit points. Lovely, excellent, and hooray. Well, may I say what a pleasure it has been, Edward. Hmm? I wish you all the best in your future endeavours. I reach up and tap Bertie on the shoulder and just pull him aside from the shelvar, sort of going, would you give us a moment, shelvar? Of course. Sir Bertrand. Sir Bertrand. Sir Bertrand. Sir Bertrand. No yes. It is my job to uh, spot this kind of thing. You're treading a very fine line, Sir Bertrand. Let's just say that I might not be the sharpest tool, but I certainly can spot a good one. And a bad one. and you, sir, are treading very perilously close to being a bad one. Should you become a bad one, you become my problem. And let me assure you, you won't be my problem for long. So in the nicest way possible, I would be careful about the choices that you are making, Sir Bertrand. You are certainly correct, Edward, in the sense that you are not the sharpest tool. But he's still taking himself in the privacy of his own head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your sage counsel. I have certainly taken it on board. I, you, you know, you're right. I, I have been treading a fine line, and maybe it is time that I turned myself to goodness. Maybe it's time that I opened myself to the light. Excellent, Just fantastic. Let it in. See, I didn't, I didn't think Still that would work, honestly. Friedrich, Friedrich's yeah. got a point. At, you know what? Grab him and just start pulling him towards the inn. Friedrich! Stop. Friedrich! Feel the Friedrich. love of Apollo inside me. Friedrich, we're back and I got a convert. You're back, are you? Great. Yes, well... Ready to go to Italy? He has No. Oh, where, where are, are you going? Eddie? Trinity, Trinity Museum, college, college. college. Trinity no. College Museum, Cambridge. 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 I'm going to Trinity. I'm going to a college, and I'm going to Cambridge because I've got a letter, and He's it's doing important. Us a favor. He's going to be doing land economy. You made an oath. There weren't Edwards. a time limit, though. We can certainly travel to Cambridge after we have visited Italy. Friedrich, if I may. Eddie is currently holding one of the only uh, extant relics of. Hannibal. Peter looks pretty surprised. We found it. We need to get it into the hands of somebody who knows what to do with it. A scholar who can study it and bring it into the scientific community. We needed somebody who was um, unimpeachable in their honesty. That's me. Unimpeachable. What more sacred duty could there be than carrying the relic of a hero, an apostle of Apollo, hmm, into capable and safe hands. Hmm? What holier duty than that, eh, Friedrich? Hmm? Oh, I know. Friendship. Friedrich. He needs to get to Paris. Any ideas? He's got friends in there in trouble and that. But, of course, thank you, Edward. I think that means that we've clearly agreed that you are going to Cambridge and Friedrich will accompany you. It would be a favour to both us and to the scientific community at large if you could do that. I agree that it is important. Unfortunately... We will not be able to do it until after we have visited Italy. It is a crucial part of Edward's religious education. That simply cannot be skipped. In which case, can you make us an oath that you will not damage or lose the headband? 
I swear I will not damage or lose the headband. And deliver it safely. And to where deliver it, needs it to go. safely to where it needs to go. I am faith in Apollo by his symbol that I wear. I swear I will do everything in my power to make sure that this happens once we have completed our immediate business. Well, can't really think of any safer hands to have it in. I can. Mine. Look at these chaps. Come on then, Edward. But he's got to get to Paris. He's got mates and that. I told you. Life. Risk. Death. Why doesn't he ask Orville? Oh, yeah. You want him. Who's Orville? The uh, owner of the um, device in the roof. The device? Better example. Oh, goodness. How about I take it? Just promise. Look, I, I will take it to Cambridge. I'll get the donation. I'll deliver you the money. And I'll make sure you get a big statue. Mm. It's in my interest to do this. This is my career. Very well, sir. I will trust your honour as a gentleman and a scholar. Hmm? You know my face as well, sir. And, and you've proven you can do a lot with that sort of thing. find it and cut it off should you cross me. And that won't happen. Excellent. There we are. All settled. To Paris! And we will end our episode, and indeed our side quest, at that point. And uh, we'll be rejoining the rest of the party next week. And I'll finally get to play Hamid again. I'm so sad to see Edward go. <laughs> yeah. I, I love being an idiot. But it's we can't. So pleasant. We of course can't promise that uh, Edward or Tielva may not turn up again at some point in the future. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed spending time with them as much as I have, and we'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at TheRustyQuill or email us at mail at RustyQuill.com. Thanks for listening. Inspect the walls, inspect the floors, if there's any sort of inscription. You know, these trap makers love doing riddles and stuff. Nope, there's nothing. Oh, okay, cool. <sighs> Stupid trap makers put riddles to help people get through traps. <laughs> <laughs> Did they want to, them to get through? He wants to prove himself worthy. <laughs> Don't they? step here. Maybe. Oh. Uh, uh, well, you put uh, a little bit of a riddle, a clue over most locks in the real world, like Yale. That means you need a Yale lock to open it. <laughs> yeah. That's a real, it's a real nuisance. I they have expect... an entire episode planned where all it is is a room with a button that says do not push, and I just <laughs> let you talk. Yes. <laughs> you are now completely normal. Could wait for the pit to slowly fill with Chelvar's blood and then swim across. I don't think I have that much blood on me. It's very densely packed in in an orc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's like a Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so having done this, and there's still presumably some slightly more ornate Carthaginian specific carvings, carvings, carving stuff figurines, around that's still yeah. remaining like ambient booty. That's, still <laughs> that's the name of our new solo album. <laughs> <Booty>. <laughs> Right. You look like you stab yourself. Not, Pull that out. Not... It wasn't in me. Oh. Did you just make a sound effect? No. <laughs> <laughs>